and murdering children, women, and men. Shame! So for those that ask us, for those that ask us, why are you protesting in Canada? What does Canada have to do with this? It's because your precious tax dollars, they go and kill our families. They go and kill our friends. So that's why you should be joining us every single week in and week out of this 300 day long genocide. When we say free, free Palestine, you should be joining us and saying free, free Palestine. Now if the first thing is, is that you're thinking of your tax dollars, shame on you. Because this is not about that. This is about humanity. This is about our people that deserve a right to live, a right to determination, a right to sovereignty just like you and I. Join us in demanding an end to Canadian complicity. Join us in saying, free. His name is Salim. He is from Gaza. And how
it back to 48. As the people united. Those feelings turn them into 
thoughts. Let those thoughts play over and over and over in your head and let those thoughts turn into action. The people in Gaza have sacrificed everything and we've seen it. Their money, their children, their homes to preserve your dignity and my dignity. And every time they emerge from under the rubbles, what do they say? We stand behind our resistance. We are not leaving this land. So the least, the least we can do for them is not stop our feelings. We need to take action. You being here today is great. It's amazing you're taking action. But it doesn't stop at a single protest. You don't come once a week on a Saturday, lose your voice and go back home. Let those thoughts, let that rage play over and over in your head and turn it into something beneficial. We see the resistance in Gaza. We're proud of the resistance in Gaza because of their courage and their consistency. We must learn to do the same. Our fight here is just as crucial and just as important as their fight over there. But it looks different. The fight on the ground looks different than the fight outside. But it is just as important. The apartheid, the occupation entity, the disgusting Zionist entity will be dismantled from within and from the outside. And that is our job. We are the people on the outside. They've done enough and they continue to do so. And they don't get the privilege of saying I'm tired. They don't get the privilege of giving up. So neither do we. When we ask you to sign something so little as a petition or to report a certain account on Twitter that's been doxing community members and trying to get them kicked out of universities and trying to get them kicked out of their jobs, do that. Never underestimate the power of the people. We are the power, we are the people. Never forget that. This fight doesn't stop, doesn't start and doesn't end in Gaza. It is our role to help them with what we can and there are so many ways you can do that on the outside. Boycotting, if you guys are getting lazy, don't. That has huge effects. You are taking money directly out of Israel's pockets. As much as awareness has been raised over the past nine months, and if you've been fighting for Palestine for a long time, I'm sure you can see the difference. When you look around in the crowd, it's not just the Palestinians fighting for their own anymore. We have everybody from all over. That is a good sign, but keep going. The fight has not ended yet, and the fight does not end until we liberate Palestine from the river to the sea. And I'm gonna end off with this. Today, 
and we are answering for a commandment. They have commanded us, every single person in the diaspora, to go out today in August 3rd to make some noise. And you all know that you have made, you did make some noise today. We support the resistance in all its forms, whether it's through culture, whether it's through your attire, whether it's through your food, whether it's through your, 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 your attire, your food, your dance, your culture, your music. But we also support the legal armed resistance that is happening in Palestine under the United Nations Article 4673. happened in the past few days. This is what pushed us to actually stand today strong in the face of these oppressors. What we have realized is Satan Yahoo went to Washington DC, got the approval and the standing ovation of occupation and genocide. He got the approval to actually assassinate the Chief Political Bureau of the Negotiations for a Ceasefire. How is this system, how is this regime calling for a ceasefire if they go ahead and assassinate the chief that is responsible for these negotiations? Not only, not only at the same day they have assassinated the chief, they have also assassinated leaders and the other resistance groups that are standing for Palestine every single day. And the cherry on top is they have assassinated journalists, Ismail al ghul that we have been watching. He has put his life ahead of him just for us, the historian, the historian that stood up day and night just to show you the word of the truth just for us all to see what is happening in Gaza. And he gets assassinated in broad daylight and his head got exploded. You know, every time we face Zionists here, Zionists there, we hear the same BS rhetoric. We always hear, what about the ovens? What about the babies? What about this and this and this and that? But they have absolute no proof behind all their allegations. But we all know that we have seen our babies in Palestine beheaded. This moment that you realize that the people of Gaza are seeing that their siblings, their cousins, their friends, kids that are beheaded, that are left nothing but flesh. What do we do? What do we do for these individuals that paid the cost, that paid the cost for justice, that paid the cost for us to do what we are doing? Look around you. We are all privileged here in Canada. We are all privileged here in Canada. And for the past 300 days of genocide, for the past 300 days of occupation, of forced eviction, of starvation, of ethnic cleansing, and you name it. But the people of Gaza stood strong and the resistance is unshaken. It's because no matter how many they kill, the resistance is an idea that will not be killed. So our brothers and sisters of Palestine have taught us something. What do we do here in Canada? All of us, I said it, we're privileged. We're all right now hungry, thinking about where we're gonna eat after this. I'm, I'm sure I'm one of them. At least we go home and there's a roof over our heads. At least there's food waiting for us. Give back. We have our brothers and sisters from Hands for Charity with the yellow vests. They're going around. Please give back to this. Give back and offer help because these guys are on the ground. They have factories and they have kitchens that were bombed and they actually rebuilt it to feed the children of Gaza. So give generously. But besides all of that, seriously, if you look around you, whether you are Jewish, Christian, Muslim, black, brown or white, we all know justice and we all know what's right. Freedom is universal. It's both yours and mine. 
Just like in the words of Nelson Mandela, freedom is incomplete until the freedom of Palestine. This is what we stand for. If you look around you, the majority is non-Palestinian. And when you understand that, this genocide has brought people together to actually grieve together, to feel this pain together, to actually make a difference in the streets. When you feel like this effort on the street isn't making a difference, I guarantee you, the resistance fighters in Palestine are watching us right now. I am telling you, we are talking, we are, they are watching us right now. They are seeing what we are doing, and they are seeing what we are doing. And they watch our every single move. And there are guys that have lost their lives expecting to watch the next demonstration in Toronto. So what do we do? You turn the lens back at yourself. And you look at yourself. What is your role in this movement? What have you done thus far for this movement? Because we are all a part of the greater collective. The greater collective that when we, when we share pain, we all feel it. When one of us get hit, we all get hit. We share sorrow, we share pain, and we share honor, and we share courage, and we share steadfastness, and we share every single thing. Because this group here that is giving back to this community is a grassroots movement that is by the community, for the community. And we cannot do what we are doing without your generous considerations. We cannot do what we are doing without your support. Whether it is showing up to these demonstrations, whether it is going to our link tree and actually e-transferring us some help, for real. This is seriously a grassroots movement for collecting a couple of hundred bucks amongst yourself to be able to rent these speakers. But I'm not here for this. You guys already know, every single group that is standing for Palestine in this city, we have to show up for them. And we have to raise the flag. And we have to continue this voice on the streets no matter what. Because, because 300 days of this ongoing genocide, yet as of today, it is day one. As of today, it is day one. Satan Yahu has dug the entire Western regime in a hole that is so deep that is going to affect every single power, even ourselves, even our tax dollars are paying and we are all gonna suffer because of that. So when we sit here and stand up on, on the streets and demand that we are heard, whether they're sitting in this parliament debating and contesting, whether they're sending cops on us trying to arrest and silencing, we will never resist, we will never forgive and never give up. لن نسكت لن نصمت ولن نعتاد No, never complicit, never silent and never surrender. This is what we are going to stand for. You've heard this many, many times. Again, this demonstration is still going on because we are not done here. This is just a small part to give back to this community. This picturesque moment is something that for many months and many years later, you're gonna look at these banners and remember, this was day 300 that I stood on the right side of history in Toronto. So, without further ado, tomorrow, on Sunday, we have a car rally that starts in Mississauga in joint convention with all the groups here in Toronto that we're going to start a car rally from Mississauga, we're gonna go to Milton, and we're gonna go to Burlington, and we're gonna make our way back. And what it is, is for us to raise the flag in these cities and towns that these flags haven't been risen before. And next, we have, on August 10th, I want to see every single one of you that pushed you to actually show up and cancel your plans for today, and join us for these few hours on this Saturday. There is crazy events in downtown. There is caravan going on over there. There is the Indian taste fest going over here. But it doesn't matter. You guys stood on the right side to choose to actually raise this flag of justice and share this moment with us. And this is for your brothers and sisters Palestine. This is how you make room in your heart so you can go home with your conscience being rested that you have done something for Palestine today. So, on August 10th, I want to see every single one of you guys in Ottawa. We have a national march in Ottawa 
and we are going to make our voices heard in the capital and the parliament and we are going to make some noise we have buses from Hamilton, from Toronto, from Mississauga go on our page and you can see how you can buy your ticket this is how you can go on and join us for this important moment it will just be one day you can go and sacrifice this one day for your brothers and sisters fall asleep this demonstration is not over for all these guys returning the flags <laughs> we are going to proceed but again, tomorrow there's a car rally. And on and the next Saturday, August 10th, we have the National March that I want to see every single one of you guys here. We have brothers and sisters that joined us today from Windsor, from Ottawa, from Montreal, and from all the way in British Columbia. We have people here just to help us do this, to give back to this community. So make some noise for Palestine. And of course, as always, as always, you guys know how I'm going to end my speech. Teach your children that Palestine is occupied, that Al-Aqsa Mosque is held captive, that the resistance is an honor, and there is no such country called Israel. Assalamu alaikum. occupying in the West Bank and all the land that it is in and it has been proven by the highest court of law in the world. So basically the ICJ has just announced what Palestinians have been saying since the beginning. That was a little confusing, I understand. We don't, we're not sure. But right now, what we're trying to find out is can we trust our government in actually making sure that this court hearing goes through? Can we trust our institutions in making sure this court hearing goes through? That's because it's up to us. It's up to us, the people, the revolution, to make sure that the ICJ court hearing goes through. It's up to us to make sure that our government is forced, they will be backed into a corner until we end up freeing Palestine, until we end up removing the occupation and ending the apartheid. Oh, where this government, where this system that we live under, which side they stand on. You already see it right in front of you, which side they stand on. But what we are going to do right now, this is not going to break our will. Because we are going to continue liberating ourselves from this system we live under in order for us to liberate the brothers and sisters of Palestine. Because this is why we are here. We are not here for these guys. We are here for Palestine. And these guys are not going to break our will. They're not going to silence us, and they're not going to stop us from what we are doing, I promise you that. So right now, right now, we are now we're going to give back to our brothers and sisters in Palestine. Every single person that is here, please join us so we can make dua for our brothers and sisters in Palestine. This is how we end our demonstrations. This is how we give back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because this is why we are here. We are here with our pure intent. We are here with a clear conscience. And we are here standing up for the rest of humanity and you all know that. We are liberating Palestine 48 and we owe you this. We're back to this community. We are going to go to Ottawa on Saturday, August 10th. Remember that. We have our buses online. Go to our pages and you can actually purchase your tickets there and our car rally tomorrow in Mississauga, inshallah. So we're gonna give it up to our sheikh. Give your hearts, close your eyes, look to the skies and pray for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
to actually accept our efforts, to for him to actually authenticate, because all of this that we do is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether you are Muslim or not, please take the moment to actually share this prayer with us. Assalamu alaikum the organizers for this amazing uh, work they have been doing tirelessly for the past not 10 months. It's almost 300 and so days of brutal, genocidal, coward war against civilians in Gaza. And it has been consistent from day one that we come out and hit the streets for one single message, end the war now. It does not need intelligence to understand what message these young people are trying to send to the different leaderships of the whole world who I call them, who have failed their own moral principles. You have the morals, you have the principles, you're upholding your Canadian values. We as Canadians should be concerned about what is happening around us and we should be standing for our own Canadian value and call for peace. In the war, there's no justification for continuation of killing civilians in Gaza. The number of those who have been killed so far has exceeded 40,000. 16,000 of those are children for Allah's sake. The number of the women, the number of the elders is out staggering. There's no justifications for the continuing support of those huge bombs from the American administration to continue to kill the children in Gaza and to continue to kill children in Palestine. What we're here for is to clearly say loudly that we are against this policy, this double standard in the policies of the international leadership in the world. The children in Gaza are not less precious than other children in other parts of the world. Why are we seeing double standard? Why are we seeing the tears in one part of the world? And we're not seeing anyone caring about the continuous killing of children in Gaza. Every day we wake up on a destruction of a school, a UN building, a hospital, and we see the continuous killing of children. Where is your moral values? Where is your principal leaderships of the world? You are cowards! You are cowards! And this war is a coward war because it's waging a war and killing civilians and killing children. If you were to be brave, you would not be killing children. Shame on you! Whatever faith background you have, let's put our hands together and our hearts and pray for the peace, for the end of the war, for the saving of lives, for the peace and tranquility to the moms who have lost everything in their lives, to the children who have lost the hope after they've seen their own parents and grandparents and uncles and cousins and elders killed in front of their own eyes with those dumb bombs that are given to the apartheid regime by the American administration. We're not only against the American people, American people are with us. They're allied with us in the same path. We're against those cowards in different administrations living in the world. And we say to them, enough is enough. You're dragging the whole world to another tragedy that no one wants to see. اللهم لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم يا رب السماوات والأرض ورب العرش العظيم يا رحمن يا رحيم يا ملك يا قدوس يا سلام يا مؤمن يا مهيمن يا عزيز يا جبار يا متكبر يا مالك الملك يا من تؤتي الملك من تشاء وتنزع الملك من من تشاء يا من تعز من تشاء وتدل من تشاء يا من بيدك الخير وأنت على كل شيء قدير اللهم نسألك بأن بأن تنزل رحماتك على أهلنا في غزة يا رب العالمين اللهم ارحم أطفالهم 
اللهم هون عليه ما هم فيه يا رب العالمين اللهم اطعم جوعاهم اللهم افتح عفشاهم اللهم داوي جرحاهم اللهم فك أسرى أسراهم اللهم هون عليه ما هم فيه برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم نسألك بأنك أنت الله الذي لا إله غيرك بأن ترحم البشرية جمعاء على هذه الأرض اللهم نسألك بأنك أنت الرحمن الرحيم بأن تفرج همنا وغمنا وكفنا وتعين على أن نقف على للحق يا رب العالمين Oh Allah, you are the mighty. We pray to you, supplicate to you to restore peace and justice on earth, Ya Rabbil Alameen. We ask you to have mercy on those who are struggling on earth. We ask you to save the lives of those innocent people who are being killed daily unjustly. We pray to you, supplicate to you to bring the conscience to this leadership of the world so they are able to do something to prevent the further destruction of this planet that we're living in the earth, Ya Rabbil Alameen. We pray to you, supplicate to you to make us from those who are standing for justice standing for haq, standing for peace, standing for, 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 for those who are undermined. Ya Allah, we pray to you, supplicate to you to make us from those who will be able to pray in al-masjid al-aqsa. Ameenina mutma'inneena fa'innaka ala kulli shay'in qadeer. Ameen. As we're concluding our prayers, we will be holding the third prayer of the day for our non-Muslim friends. You may stand with us and watch us saying the prayer of the last, the third prayer of the day. And after we conclude the prayer, we will be having Salatul Janaza, the prayer we normally uh, uh, do for the deceased on behalf of those who have passed away around the globe of innocent civilians as a, a, as a gesture from our side to show that they are not forgotten, they are not alone, and we are, they are in our hearts, and we're doing whatever it takes to prevent further killing to any civilian on earth. Ameen. So inshallah, I will be asking the brothers to call for the prayer of Asr, the third prayer of the day. And after that, we will be having the prayer done short, in a short time. And then our uh, friends will be watching us. And then they can join us for the prayer of Janazah, the deceased prayer that we will be having afterwards.